everybody. We are here in Bend, Oregon with Jeremiah and Erin and their cool little camper, which is a wolf pup, and her name is River. And we're gonna be installing a new solar powered system. 400 watts on the roof, 200 watts of portable, and a brand new Rego system by Renogy that we are super, super excited about. Our first step was to figure out where we wanted to put our new Renogy solar panels. Laid the cardboard out exactly where we want the panels to go, but we have the old panel that's a 50 watt panel that is not going to work with our new system. So our first step is gonna to be to cut that out. <laughs> Since we are installing 200 watt panels, the existing 50 watt panel cannot be included in the new array as it is too small. We also removed the existing lead acid battery and tiny charge controller that came with the trailer. Before placing the panels on the roof, we installed four mounting brackets on each of the panels. To help secure the panels in place, we are using a Turnabond double stick tape on the bottom of each mounting bracket. Once the panels are in position, trace around the feet to mark the location, then clean the area with rubbing alcohol to remove any dirt so that you can get a good seal between the tape and the roof. Remove the backing from the Eternabond tape and secure the panel to the roof. It's easier to do this one side at a time. Now it's time to drill in the self-tapping screws that come with the panel kit. Add some die core sealant to each screw before completely securing the panels to the roof. Once everything is secured down, go over each foot with a generous amount of die core self-leveling sealant as an overall waterproof protection for the membrane roof. Then just repeat the process with each panel. It was a very cold day, so we kept the die core warm before applying it then used a hair dryer to help it cure. This process worked very well even with temps in the low 40s. In order to pull the new solar panel wires through the roof, we removed the old cable entry housing and planned to reuse it. The great thing about die core is that it never fully hardens, so if you are careful, you can remove the old die core, clean the surface, and reuse the cable entry housing. So X marks the spot where the cable entry housing is on the roof. So we measured from the exterior wall of river over to here to figure out where that was. So we knew where our wires were coming in from. And then we went ahead and removed this molding here, as well as the staples to pull the ceiling panel down just a little bit, and then ran those wires over to here. And then our next step is we're gonna tuck those wires in behind the door and the molding there and ultimately get them into the cabinet below the sink where the new solar components are gonna live. Remember, it's important to install all of your solar components before plugging in your panels. Connecting the MC4 connections on the roof is the final step. Check out episode four for our complete Rego installation video. This last step is optional, but you might want to consider having a portable solar suitcase option available for low solar gain days or when you want to park the rig in the shade but still be able to charge. We're using some extra wire left over from the solar panel installation and creating a short extension cord directly from the DC terminals through the trailer to a pair of MC4 connectors so that they can plug in the solar suitcase without having to open the solar component cabinet. We're not tying this panel into the solar charge controller along with the other panels, as this 200 watt solar suitcase has its own built-in charge controller, so this remains a safe charging option. <laughs> 